part of the way that we model a blended classroom. Well, the obvious one is we're blended just because you're accessing this video and we have a website that you visit every day you come in and you go to the website and you sign in there and we have things for you to do digitally. So that's one way that we model a blended classroom. The other way that we model that is through virtual classes. So if you've never taken an online class, we're going to have some sessions that gives you a little bit of exposure to online learning. Um, very likely you're going to be doing some sort of blended and it's very possible that you'll be teaching some online courses in the future so we hope that this gives you some ideas and get your feet wet about that experience. Uh, not to say that it'll be perfect. Um, we don't expect you to be perfect um, and hopefully you don't expect the same from us. We're all learning and, and trying to get better but we'd like to just give you some exposure to some some different um, situations that you um, may be in in your future career and, and it could be through your teaching online or it could be through you taking some um, classes uh, either through the credential program or for your master's program. My master's program and doctoral program was all online. Um, it was really great uh, and there's some good one programs and there's bad ones but there's very high likelihood that at some point you're going to be uh, engaged in virtual classes in some way. So we're going to do that in this class. Uh, the virtual dates are listed on the syllabus, so you want to pay attention to those. We also make announcements in the Google community. So again, it's always really important that you are reading the Google community twice a week. And if you're not sure if we're having class face-to-face -face in person or if we're having virtual class, post a question to the Google community. Someone will answer. Uh, I check it almost daily. Um, so we'll make sure we get that clarified for you. Also, I send out a newsletter every week if you sign in with the correct email address. So that's kind of the uh, tricky part of that. If you accidentally misspell your email, then you're not going to get the newsletter. But I, I send out a newsletter each week, and I would mention, hey, don't forget, next week is virtual class or it's face-to-face. -face. Um, I'll definitely always include when it's uh, the next week is going to be virtual just to, to give you a reminder. So there's a bunch of places if you're paying attention so you'll know that it is going to be virtual class. So what does that mean, virtual class? It means we don't meet in the classroom. Um, sometimes you can get one of the other teachers to let you in the room, but we won't be there to let you in. So you can go upstairs to room 420 in the Kremen building, and if you're not using that room, totally should. That is absolutely available to you. They have laminators up there, and they'll make photocopies, and they have computers for you to use, uh, study tables. Uh, that is for those of you who want to be teachers, so that's all of you. So you're welcome to use room 420. You could go to the library. Um, you could go to your house. Uh, just some place that has an internet connection and a computer and, and again the library in room 420 on campus are available to you so hopefully you don't have any problems. So also we'll give you a little bit of time um, in a virtual class where we're basically just asking you to work together with your group on your group project. Uh, but no matter what I always have an agenda on the website every week. Um, Every week there's going to be an agenda, so you do need to sign in. Whether or not you're there is irrelevant. You have to sign in. Um, and even if you are not in attendance that week and you're sick, please sign in also. There is a thing for you to mark on there that you're not actually there. But again, I send out the newsletter based on you signing in, so I need you to make sure that you do that. Um, but um, some weeks will be skinnier than others. So on, a, on a virtual class where you're working with a group, I might put in a couple of short activities for you to do where the majority of the activities for you to be working with your group. So expect that. Expect to get some time to work with your group. Um, and then also expect that we are planning like what kinds of things do we want to do in this class that for a variety of reasons is better not face to face. So my favorite example is one week um, we're going to watch each other's group videos. So your groups are going to make a video. Having 30 people in a room all watching videos at the same time is less than fun. So it makes a lot more sense to say you should wear comfy pajamas and eat some popcorn and watch everybody's group videos um, in the comfort of your own home. And there's no reason that we have to be physically in person to do that particular activity. And so just remember as you get to your classrooms is what kinds of things have to happen in a 
teacher gives the information kind of model and what kinds of things could you let students explore and learn on their own. How to use a chainsaw is not a good example of that, um, but how to draw concentric circles might. Um, and then what kinds of things could students do on a computer versus needing to do in different medium and what kinds of things away from class versus in class. And so that you design all of these environments really intentionally thinking why is this better. So that is something that we do is we have specific objectives uh, that we want you to learn and some of them are better not face to face. And I know for some of you it's going to be really frustrating because you're not used to it. But again, this is an introductory class, and we'd like to introduce you to some online and blended. And yeah, might be a little bit uncomfortable, but you don't learn, you don't learn on accident. You know, you just got to get your hands dirty and, and give it a go. So uh, that's going to be um, part of the course.